Now the husband of missing Cohasset woman Anna Walsh is being arraigned in Quincy District Court this morning on charges of misleading police in the investigation. Let's listen in. Mr. Brian Walsh, it's complaint 230136 out of Cohasset. You're charged with intimidation of a witness on the 8th of January 2023. A not guilty plea will be entered. Do you understand that charge, Mr. Walsh? Yes. I'll hear from the Commonwealth. Yes. Please. Good morning, Your Honor. Lynn B. Lynn for the Commonwealth. Your Honor, the charge before the court right now, the defendant is charged under the intimidation, that being misleading the police in the course of an investigation. The investigation was into the um, missing person of Anna Walsh. Anna uh, is the wife of this defendant. She's 37 years old. They have three children, two, four, and six. Anna Walsh was last seen on New Year's Day about uh, between 4 and 6 a.m. in the morning. The defendant indicated that she left the house to go uh, she works in Washington, D.C. Uh, the defendant indicated in the subsequent interview that she left the house around 6 a.m. taking an Uber or Lyft to go to the airport, uh, where she was going to go to work uh, in D.C. That was the last time uh, she was seen. Uh, in the course of the investigation, um, police were notified around January 4th by her employees in Washington, D.C., that she had not shown up for work on January 4th. Uh, that was the first time that she was uh, notified that she was missing. Up until this point, the defendant had not notified anyone that she was missing. In uh, the investigation, was determined that she actually had a plane ticket for January 3rd, which she did not use, and did not show up at the airport, nor her D.C. job or her apartment in D.C. Um, it was indicated that the defendant, um, uh, they checked, uh, police checked during the course of this investigation. There was not a Uber uh, or any kind of lift that had picked her up on January 1st. Uh, in fact, in the course of the investigation, it was determined that her cell phone pinged in the area of the house, which is um, located on Chief Justice Cushing Way, that her phone pinged on the first and the second, which is after the defendant had said she had left. Additionally, the defendant right now was on uh, house arrest, uh, pending sentencing in federal court. Out of that probation and condition, he was to report his whereabouts if he was to leave the house. Um, he indicated, in, as part of the investigation, when police spoke with him, that on January 1st, he went to his mother's house. However, it took him a lot longer because he got lost going to his mother's house in Swampskin. He also publicly indicated and stated to the police that he went to Whole Foods and CVS. Police uh, subsequently did surveillance and checked. There was no surveillance or indication that he went to Whole Foods, no CVS. He indicated he purchased some items. There's no receipts for him having purchased that. He then returned home. Surveillance uh, uh, was checked by several police during this time frame. These statements caused a lot of delay as part of the investigation as police now were focusing on the North Shore. He further indicated that on January 2nd, as he was supposed to report in, that the only time he left is that he went to take his son for some ice cream. Surveillance checked during the investigation indicated that defendant, in fact, on January 2nd, sometime after 4 o'clock, went to the Home Depot, um, which is in Auckland. He's on surveillance at that time, purchasing about $450 worth of cleaning supplies. That would include mops, bucket, tops, um, TVEX, uh, drop cloths, uh, as well as various kinds of tape. 
Uh, he's on surveillance at that time uh, on January 2nd, even though he said he never left the house. Uh, police obtained a search warrant and actually searched the house um, with crime scene services. And during that time, they found blood in the basement. Uh, blood was found in the basement area, as well as a knife, which also contained some blood. Um, Sorry, could you repeat that last time I missed it? Yes, uh, in the basement, uh, crime scene services uh, recovered and found blood in the basement area, in a section of the basement. There was also a knife that was found. On the knife, there was also blood, uh, and part of the knife was damaged. Your Honor, um, these various statements caused a delay uh, in the investigation to the point that during the time frame when he didn't report his wife and gave various statements, that allowed him time to either clean up evidence, uh, dispose of evidence, um, in causing a delay. Uh, as of this time, uh, Anna Walsh has not been found. Um, so because of that, the Commonwealth is asking 500,000 cash bail. At this time, these are the charges. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Walsh's wife has been missing um, since January 1st. And it is true that her employer um, contacted the police on January 4th. However, that was as a result of Mr. Walsh, Brian Walsh, contacting the employer to say, I haven't heard from my wife. Um, the employer suggested that their security team, who was a former law enforcement officer, uh, contact both the Cohasa police and, and the DC Metro police, which he did. Mr. Walsh has given several interviews. We have consented to searches of his home. We have consented to searches of his property. We have consented to searches of his cell phone. I negotiated with a uh, first assistant the district attorney, ain't it to you, um, Lynn Beeland, on the terms of that to protect attorney client. He has, been, he has been incredibly cooperative. The charges are not anything relating, uh, he's not charged with murder. He's charged with uh, misleading investigators by not saying, as I understand it, he went to Home Depot um, in, in Nor well in Rockland. He did say he went to press in um, Norwell, and um, as Your Honor knows, Rockland, the Rockland Home Depot was right next to Norwell. Um, if in fact he was there, it was, it was next in the town next to him. With respect um, to the other alleged omission is that he was in Brockton and um, Abington. They don't have him stopping anywhere in those areas as far as the police report says. Um, he, he did say that he took his son out twice on um, the second. He is on home confinement. He has a bracelet on him. Um, there's, this is he, a violation has been um, noticed of him. So if he um, leaves here, he will, there's a federal detainer. He will be taken to federal court, and I would suggest that on the bail violations in federal court, the appropriate place to decide those conditions of release is, is in the federal court. I would ask uh, for low bail or no bail and to let the federal courts um, decide this. Decide this. Um, he's not going anywhere. He hasn't gone anywhere since January 1st. He's been in the house. That's true. He's been in the house with police almost. 12 hours a day. I've been at the house with him, with police, for at least eight hours a day. Well, not yesterday, but um, yesterday the police were at his house and he was at my home. Um, but Friday and Saturday I was at his house for at least eight hours um, with police officers present. So it's not that he's been there changing evidence um, or somehow impeding the investigation. The charges are he neglected to, to mention that he went to Abington and Brockton, and that he neglected to mention that he was at a Home Depot. I suggest on those charges, for um, a regular person, as everybody has to be treated, um, that that would be a no bail situation. The fed with respect to violation of conditions of his federal bail, that is most appropriately dealt with in the federal court. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Bail is set at $500,000 cash, $5 million surety. We get a 30 day date, Miss Miner, please. How uh, what date would you like? You tell me any any date he would be uh, we would do this by teleconference from the House of Correction. Okay. 
Richie, I want you to keep the uh, yeah, if I can I just have a look. copy of the warrant. So keep that in the file, please. Thank you. $500,000 cash and you have a right to appeal that bill to Superior Court. If you make this bill and get arrested or charged with any more offense while this case is pending, you could be held up to 90 days without bail. We're going to pick a conference date within 30 days. Yeah. Is Thursday, February 9th available? Thursday, February 9th is perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. February 9th. A video, many Thank you. Okay. Thank you.